Hey everybody, this is Lawrence and welcome to another episode of Dirty Basement Terrain. In this episode, we're continuing our series of rock scatter terrain. And in this episode, I'm going to be showing you how to go from this to this. Frozen wasteland or snow or winter, whatever you want to call it. Again, I feel that rock scatter terrain is by far the most versatile, useful, and easy to make scatter terrain that you can make, especially if you're newer to the hobby. It doesn't really require too many specialized tools. You don't need a hot wire cutter. You just need a trusty, trusty blade to cut up the foam. Um, some PVA, some paint, some maybe some flocking and whatnot, but all in all, rock scatter terrain is really easy to make. So, but again, as always, I'm going to show you how I make it. Uh, I want you to take, if you want, take how I make something, put your own twist on it, and make it your terrain. You don't have to follow my exact methods if you don't want to. This is a pretty simple step. Just grabbing my trusty orphan knife and shaving down a scrap piece of foam to the rough shape that I eventually want while cutting off sharp edges and corners. Same as in the previous rock video. <laughs> Matter of fact, this is the same footage. This is another pretty simple step. Grabbing the Ulfa knife again, just trying to carve a more distinct shape for what I eventually want to go for. Maybe some little overhangs or maybe give it like a tri foot area, but and now I'm just carving out some texturing by simply pushing the blade in a little bit and then twisting it out so it gives a long line. I don't have any real reason for doing it like this other than at the moment I thought, you know what, this will look cool. <laughs> But this is just uh, one of many ways that you can texture foam and put in some decent looking shapes to it. Of course, got the whole way around. Now, to add a little more texture to it, I'm going with the good old foil ball texturing trick. This is to just give it some little dents and divots that... I can't get with the blade. As you can see with this piece, with the way that I carved it, it's going to be very prone to tipping over, so I'm going to have to add some weight to the bottom. I'm using a fishing sinker. Uh, you know, I've seen people use washers, I've seen people use bolts, screws, anything to add weight to the bottom to help keep it from tipping over. Right now I'm just going to cut out a hole with my X-Acto blade. You can use whatever you want, but you need to cut out a cavity for whatever you're using for weight. Even if you're using like a screw or something, it's still a good idea to take like a barbecue skewer and then put a hole in it for the screw to go in. It will prevent from sp the foam from splitting at all. Even though the foam is pretty giving, I still prefer to just drill a hole in. But now that I've got my weight in there, I'm just basically filling the hole up with some hot glue, shoving the weight in, and topping it off with some hot glue, and then I'm going to press it onto some wax paper or you can use regular parchment paper and as you can see it's not tipping over with the weight in it of course now we're moving on to as always the good old black mod podge which is just a mixture of black paint and mod podge this is just to strengthen the foam itself and protect it somewhat and to get your black base coat at all one shot Of course, in this step, now that the 
Mod Podge is all dry, I want to give it its base coat. And as usual, I'm going to be using a dark blue gray. Now, on further steps, I'm going to be changing up a little bit for my standard for stone, but this first base coat is the dark blue gray works perfect for me. As usual, if you want to, you can completely skip this step. But I'm using a petunia purple to add a little bit of streaks of color into the stone itself. I thought, you know, purple will look good because this is frozen wasteland and I kind of want to go for a cold effect, not with my standard browns, greens, and like brownish orange, red. So purple it is. Okay, for this step, I'm actually doing something a little bit different. I'm going with a 50-50 mix of my standard pewter gray and cool blue, both from Apple Barrel. Like I said, being that this is like a snow, frozen, wasteland, icy type of scatter terrain, I want to give it a cold look. And I feel adding blue to the gray will just kind of enhance that cold frozen look just a slight bit so I'm going for roughly I'm going to be going for roughly an 80 to 85 percent coverage on this and again as usual the glove for this step is only to keep a lot of paint off my hand Okay, now for this step, I'm mixing a 50-50 mix of my standard granite gray and, from Apple Barrel and China Blue, also from Apple Barrel. I said, I, again, I'm just trying to go for a cold, frozen look to this stone, and the touch adding of the blue, I feel, helps. And I don't want a lot to go on the plate for this, so I'm just using this disposable pipe at pipet or eyedropper, whatever it is, to get transfer the paint right and pour it out. Again, I'm just using it as usual. I'm using an old um, makeup brush I got from the Dollar Tree. They work great for this, and I'm just dry brushing to get the edges and bring out a lot of that detail and the texturing. Okay, now I'm doing something a little different from usual. I'm actually going to be using a black wash, sort of. I'm going to pour a little bit into a mixing cup, and then I'm going to be adding some blue ink to it. Because, again, this is a cold look, and I want that blue tint to everything just to give a bit of cold, cool, coldness to it, the look to it. And there you can see I got what I want. And I'm just going to grab a, my wash brush, I guess you could call it, and give this thing 100% coverage and, hope, and wait for it to dry. Now that it's all dry, see, it has like a laugh, kind of like a cold slate look to it almost. And if you would want, you could stop here. But I want to bring up the the edge highlighting with then the texture up again. 
So I'm going to be using that mix I made of the granite gray and the china blue. I give it another light dry brush going from the top and a little bit down. down. What is a frozen, icy wasteland piece of terrain without ice? And to make what I just showed you, I'm going to be using Green Stuff World's UV resin. It's a pretty. It basically comes out at the consistency of well, PVA. And you use an ultraviolet light to cure it, and it gets hard. It that's pretty well much it. Now, before actually handling the, the UV resin directly, you should put on some nitrile gloves just f as an added layer of protection. Because it is resin. Resin does tend to be a little eh for you, but so. But handled properly, it's perfectly safe. And you see, I'm just kind of dragging out the drops of resin I put on the parchment paper and dragging out in lines. Now I'm using a UV light to cure it. I could probably do it in like 30 seconds, but I always put it on for like 90 just to make sure. And I'm going to pull this off. I'm going to use a toothpick to test to make sure it's actually cured. It is. So I'm going to start peeling it off. And this is what you get. Icicles. I was in Michael's Craft Store and I saw this Signature Crafts Light Cure UV Resin. And I figured, yeah, yeah, I'll grab a bottle, see how well it works. And compare it to the Green Stuff World Resin. And did the exact same process. Put some drops down, cured it, pulled it up. And honestly, it works just as well as the Green Stuff World stuff. As you can see here. Now, there are different ways to attach um, cured UV resin to, uh, stuff. You could put it on directly, but I didn't do that. So, you can attach it and use additional resin, but unfortunately, my UV flashlight wasn't working. So, I went with this method. Um, bit of super glue gel, put it to where I want it, and I tested it out. Trimmed off the icicles a little bit with scissors. That's all you really need for stuff this thin and inserted it where I wanted it and moved on and let it dry and I got icicles on it then Again, this is a frozen wasteland type of terrain, so I want to try this product I've had for a while, but just haven't had a chance to use it. Some Green Stuff World Liquid Frost. So I figured, okay, yeah, I'll paint some on the icicles, paint some on the stone, just, you know, add little splashes of frost onto this rock because, well, it is a frozen wasteland. It's going to have some frost on it. So just putting it where I think would look good. And wait and see how it looks. Okay, I wanted some frozen wasteland slash snow terrain without snow. I'm using Woodland Scenic Snow Effect, Snow Flock 
and just basically mix in uh, paste with some PVA. I'm using Aileen's Tacky Glue because it's my go-to for PVA. Again, same as when making um, moss. Just add small bits of glue at a time. Don't add it all at one shot. You don't want to over put too much glue in. Now that I've got my glue all mixed up, I'm just basically grabbing a popsicle stick and smearing it on where I think the glue would be. I'm also taking care that I actually cover up where the icicles are attached to the stones themselves too. Because some of the attachments, as I was doing it, didn't quite look so pretty and I wanted to use it to cover up, up how it, the, where it attached to the stones. The end result actually winds up looking good, so... I'm not going to complain too much. That's the great thing about crafting. If you do something that doesn't look 100% great or to your satisfaction, you can always make it look so much better in a later step, like I did here. And I wanted to add some more ice to this, so I grabbed some extra heavy gel gloss. It's a medium, basically. And, like I said, it will dry crystal clear and at a high gloss. So, it'll look like... Like, in cracks and stuff, where the water may have run and frozen. It looks... Uh, like ice that is just dried on or basically frozen in place instead of dripping like the icicles and the end result I was actually really happy with Hey all, if you made it this far, it means you watch it to the end. As always, I really do appreciate that. If you like the video, click like. If you want to see more videos, hit the subscribe button. More are coming. If you want to have, uh, leave a comment. Leave a comment down in the comment section, wherever that may be. Um, I try. I try and read all of my comments and respond. So there's that. If you want to get in contact with me outside of the comment section uh, there's a link to my discord page in the about tab of this page of the dirty basement terrain page you can ask me wherever you want i hope you guys enjoyed this i know i did i don't make many much snow terrain much snow frozen terrain anymore and this this was a nice change of pace for me. so again i hope you guys picked liked what you saw and I hope it helps you out making your own. But again, as always, remember, the only person you got to worry about when making your terrain is you, because it's your terrain. <laughs>